All right, guys, how are we doing today? Good. Yeah. So uh, this is the next evolution version of our little round table. And uh, what we all have, what we all did when everything kind of went to hell in a handbasket a month ago, uh, when the government shut all our gyms down, is a bunch of us got together and created this little gym support group. So this is uh, Lisa from the Hub and High River, and this is Colin. <laughs> <laughs> so guys tell us a bit about yourself Lisa how about you ladies first all right so thanks um I'm Lisa Saban Smith and I'm running out of time uh we'll see what happens here sorry um I'm from High River Alberta and I own the Hub PT which is a more so functional style training um free weights galore and uh yeah, that's we work with Olympic weightlifters, powerlifters, a whole bunch of different sports teams, and a great group of people within our community. Cool. Colin, how about you? All right. Well, I'm uh, Colin DeWolf, and I'm part owner or one of the owners of Back Alley Fitness in Medicine Hat. Um, our facility would be a kind of more of a traditional strength training facility or a fitness facility where we also operate classes, but have a heavy focus on uh, tried and true training methodologies. So, Cool. So uh, what I wanted to ask you guys is because you were both high level athletes. Uh, I just want to know a few questions about that. I'm sure my little group does too. So um, what was the most valuable lesson you learned in sports? Lisa, ladies first. Oh boy. Oh, perspective. Probably perspective was the most valuable. If you walked in thinking you already, you lost, you already lost. Um, and then realizing that a good day, a bad day doesn't actually determine your worth. It just determines the amount of effort that was put in or the circumstances that were placed in front of you. And then definitely the hard work pays off and patience and grace, lots and lots of grace was learned for me. That's a pretty cool one. Colin, how about you? Um, I would say persistence. Uh, as a fighter, you have to show up and you have to work hard every single session. And it's not always fun when someone's punching you in the face. So uh, being persistent and standing there and not turning and, you know, taking the easy way out is, uh, is the, probably one of the hardest things you can do in life mm -hmm. is to just whatever is smacking you in the face, stand there and you have to move forward. Right. Yeah. So persistence. A rocky quote. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's very hard to get it. Keep moving forward. <laughs> cool. So before we go any further, why don't you guys tell us about your sports? Oh, yes. Uh, I competed in bobsleigh. Uh, before then I played every single sport growing up and swam and played volleyball for a state. Cool. Uh, for me, my primary sport was, uh, it's kind of an archaic sport uh, called Sanda or Sanshao. It's uh, full contact kickboxing with essentially judo, judo or Russian Sambo thrown in. So it's kind of like stand-up MMA where you punch and kick and slam each other to the ground as hard as possible. Uh, so it was it, fun and challenging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. So a follow-up to that one was what is the most valuable lesson you learned since you left your sport? Patience. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, you know what, oh, for me, it was when I left my sport, I went back to what my original education was, which was graphic design. Um, and I learned that I'm not an office chairperson and I really like control for um, myself and my future and being able to make my own decisions and not have them made for me by bosses or other people. Um, because bobsleigh was a lot of like, you had your head people, but you also, you were, I was a pilot. So I was driving, I was literally in the driver's seat. I was the one making the choices and the decisions as we went forward. Um, and then definitely patience just for outcomes and, uh, going into owning my own business. I mean, you have that amazing, cash sheet that you show up to the bank to get support and 
uh, it's totally not like that when you actually start your business and you realize you have to be patient in the process and, and practice patience so that the people around you actually understand and see the value of that as well. Yeah, I think everyone's on the patience right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, how about you? Uh, for me, I learned that you cannot define yourself by any one thing. Uh, I found as an athlete, my uh, self-image and a lot of what I did was surrounded by that. And it determined a lot of the decisions I made in life. Uh, since leaving sports uh, in that capacity, um, it, it was different to shift gears where you, you are not this thing anymore. Uh, you are something else. So defining yourself by one thing in life, I think is kind of kind of like you back yourself into a corner of who you can be or who you present yourself to be. Um, so people are diverse and they have a lot of different feelings and a lot of different interests. Uh, so I've learned since then to be a man of many things, not one thing. So that, that's my, my thing that I learned the hard way. <laughs> <Renaissance again. laughs> okay. Uh, what is one thing you teach all your clients when you work with them? Oddly enough, patience. <laughs> uh, yeah. Really, really trying to teach them to trust the process and that while my plan might not look like the plan they're looking for, it is the best plan for them. Um, but beyond that, in more like a really, really small micro situation, it would be more so learning how to hold your posture, your spine, proper breath work, proper core, resetting the foundations, finding your grounding into the ground through the foot, um, and starting from there and trying to work outside of that and even if they're they come in as a top athlete we still go and reset back to that beginning that beginning uh foundational breath work and grounding because it's usually the the key lead to any chronic issue that we find as we move into their training programs for them cool gone uh, mine's a lot similar. Um, I try and teach people to look farther into the future than what they currently are. Um, I find a lot of people with their goals, it's an immediate two month window that they have for themselves or something like that. And they lose sight of the big picture and what that means long term, right? Not that someone shouldn't have short term goals, but I feel like very short term goals can be consuming for a period and lead you into areas that you don't necessarily want to be, right? So it's kind of like you need to know what city you want to end up in and not just what street you're on right now uh, is kind of the way I look at that, right? Um, I find, especially with strength athletes, they're so focused on more on the bar that taking a step back and looking at the bigger picture, like if they don't do that, they end up hurt and then they uh, – they're out of what they're doing very quickly. So the big picture is important. And that, that counts for weight loss, fat loss, whatever, right? If you're looking at this week or next week or tomorrow, rather than two months, three months, a year, two years, maintenance mm -hmm. after that, uh, that big picture is important, right? Yeah. Rather than chasing the immediate thing that's in front of you. So overestimate what you can do in two months and underestimate what you can do in a year. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, this is always one of my fun questions is what is one question you wish everyone would ask you, uh, but people rarely do and then answer it. <laughs> and then answer it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't okay, pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Colin? Um, I guess for me, uh, an interesting question would be, um, what do people call you? Um, it depends, it depends. Uh, so my wife and her family has owned a karate club for a long time and my background is martial arts. However, I've never done karate. So when I go do karate, I am known as the great white ninja. Uh, I stole that from Chris Farley, <laughs> but, uh, but no, I am the white belt that beats up black belts in karate. It's, it's fun. Um, it's hilarious because I have a very different movement style than them. So they don't necessarily know how to anticipate what I do. Uh, so 
Uh, that's a, a fun little question. I, I am known as the great white ninja down here. So. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, gosh, I feel like I'm an open book. What, I don't, I, I can't answer this. I'm sorry. Hey, all right. Well, last question. Speaking of books, what is one book you wish everyone would read? Okay, so for me, um, Driven by Lawrence Nori, it's above my head, so it makes it easy. Um, it's more on like neurology or like psychology and everything and the habits that shape our decisions for most all of mankind. Um, and then recently I read The Body, which is like, I think it's the complete guide for its host or something like that by... Um, Oh gosh, now it escapes me. But he's actually like a humor or, uh, author rather than a science author. But he made this book about all the things that the human body does actually interesting to read because he just like covers surface level, put humor in it, and it was it was great. That's good. Cool. Call uh, me. For me, uh, because I spend so much time uh, reading articles and stuff like that in relation to what I do, I try to read things that are not anything about that. Um, so my recommendation would be The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah it's, a, it's a nice little book. It was an easy read, but uh, kind of gives you a little perspective of what to put your, uh, your, your um, effort into and what not to. I guess you would say, right? Like, if you worry too much about what other people think or say, uh, you get led astray. Would be mm -hmm. the simple yeah. thing there. So yeah, good. Book. I read it. Yeah, I've ordered Driven. Of course, it hasn't shown up yet. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, it's yeah. an older publication too, so it's not as top of mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Other than that, guys, thanks for this. It was fun. Thank you. Yeah. Well, catch you later. Yep. Right.